Okay, so I wanted to talk about what I've been doing uh, and just to demonstrate my input lag testing setup, uh, which you can see in front of you at the moment. Um, so it's quite powerful, it's quite versatile. I think it's potentially the best way of doing it that uh, I can come up with. Um, I'll just give, I'll grab the camera and I'll move it about and show everyone what's going on. So the first thing to see, it's all controlled by the Arduino. Uh, this is a Mega. I probably don't need that much power for this, uh, but it's what I've always used for my programmable setups. It has an LCD screen, touch screen, which lets you control various different functions that we'll demonstrate in a second. There's four pins going off and a ground pin, which come across to here for my little uh, setup. And so basically what happens is you have a video signal coming in and the Arduino will occasionally either allow or disallow that signal to go through to here before going off to be captured. And you can do the same thing also for the blue. Yeah, so obviously then this is coming from a component signal. So the green signal is not at all easy to interfere with, but the red and the blue are okay. The audio is just left alone. And then that's all being captured by the Ava Media Live Camera Portable. Um, and then in the same way as we're in allowing or disallowing the signal to go through, same thing is happening here with our PlayStation controller. So you can do this with that, you can do it with the Aki or the, uh, sorry, the USB or the, the Aki, whatever you want to do. And, and it basically gives you the ability then to control uh, or to test various different controllers. So, just to show what we're up to at the moment, this is uh, Blaze Blue, which is my standard game to test. It's quite fast, it's across various different formats, um, and it's very responsive, and the animation is very easy to read. And so I thought what we would do, just first, you can see that there's a, a green flashing line coming down the screen. Uh, basically what that is, that's the period of time where the video signal is being interrupted, and then as you can see by the, the colors everywhere else, this is all normal. I've got it set up so that it happens every uh, 400 milli, 400,000 uh, microseconds. Uh, so every 400 milliseconds, so every 24th frame. There's a bit of a bug here. Uh, just with the AVE meter, before it captures, it only displays 30 frames a second. And so every, it has to kind of loop through. So what's happening is as the green bar goes down the screen, that's where the button's being pressed kind of you get a watermark to demonstrate how far along in the frame with this whole thing plus a bit actually uh, is you know that representing this is the beginning of the frame and this is the end of the frame and so how far the green bar has traveled displays at what point within any given frame it's been pressed so we can come back to that later on just to uh, demonstrate some things quickly in terms of what we can do so you can see the green bar is just about to come back on the screen one of the things we're able to do is to alter how big the green bar is. And, and so we can make it very big. Or we can just make it slightly bigger. Pardon me. You can see there it's suddenly kind of three times the size, but only for the red component. And so what we can do is we can individually change the timing on the player one and the player two sides, and that's visible on the screen. As quickly I'm going to reset it and what you'll see is the screen goes gray while it's resetting because none of the color has been allowed through and we can change how quickly it cycles through if you wanted to do things uh, more rapidly and so you can do one frame uh, pressed for one controller and then another one to follow so if you wanted to test two different buttons so what I've got it set up at the moment is just for a single millisecond to be pressed whereas if it was a, a frame 16.66 milliseconds it would take up the entire screen uh, so I know what everyone is most interested in is the comparison of the DualShock controllers because that's what's kind of piqued the interest in this. You can see here, uh, you can see here that I've got a, a standard old DualShock 4, no controller or no USB plugged in, and it doesn't make a difference if it is plugged in or not for the old controllers uh, on the PlayStation 4. Um, and then I've got two of the signals across here, just so happens to be on the blue side. Yeah, and then we're going to test that against the uh, the uh, wired new DualShock 4.
Now, unfortunately, we have no power. So I'm just going to stop quickly and we'll come back and uh, carry on with the demonstration.